Hello and welcome to Running with the Bears podcast, second ever episode, Adam and Josh running it back. And uh, I guess technically like week two of the preseason, I don't know if the Hall of Fame game officially counts, uh, but week two of the Caleb Williams preseason era. Uh, Josh, take it away. What do you think, buddy? If I had to give him a grade, I'd give him a C plus. You know, I was... I would, and the reason is this: you're playing as the backups. You're playing backups. Now he's going to have some bumps in the road. And I'm okay with that. But what I this is what I noticed when he was standing in the pocket. I didn't see many throws being made that were on that you know were completed. What I did see was he was able to make some great throws on the run, which is his bread and butter, a la Patrick Mahomes. You know, moving around and then firing it on the run. That's his thing. That's his special. You know, that's what makes him special. But what I need to see more of, and I now on the pass interference play, I'll give him that. He had a great bomb on that play and it worked. It just got, you know, it was a PI call. But other than that, he struggled. He was six for 13. You can't have that against backup. Now he led a touchdown drive, but that first quarter, that was a very, very poorly executed first quarter. Second quarter, he turned it around. But if you're going to perform that way against backups, I got to see more than just six for 13. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't as efficient as uh, last week against the Bills. Uh, did get into the touchdown uh, or get a, a touchdown on the on the ground. Uh, impressive escape there. And we're, t- of course, talking about uh, the Bengals game. that was August 17th. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I like that. I feel like it's so easy to get swept away in the Twitter highlights, you know, like the amazing throws. And he did have, you know, that kind of the core strength on this guy when he's rolling out and he throws that bomb to a Dunze, I believe it was. Was that to a Dunze? It was to Roma Dunze. Yes, it was. And he's like kind of, that's the stuff that, you know, I think a lot of, the NFL scouts were probably salivating over. I mean, they were foaming at the mouth over that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I give him his props. He knows how to make those throws. But you cannot go six for 13 against backups. Can't do yeah. that. And you can't expect me to give you a good grade because you went six for 13. You let a touchdown drive. You let an excellent drive. You know, I like David Kaplan, like, David Kaplan's like salivating all over this guy. We've got a quarterback. Listen, how many times have we said this about Bears quarterbacks and they end up flopping miserably? We said it about Justin Fields. Last year they had Justin Fields as an MVP candidate and he crapped the bed. So, you know, it's – we've seen this time and time again. Throwing the football-wise – You could make the argument besides Jay Cutler, this is the best guy in terms of throwing ability or Jim McMahon that the Bears have ever had, definitely in that category, in terms of his ability to make plays and throw the ball accurately. But I got to see more than six for 13. I was not impressed yesterday at all. I was very disappointed, actually. Uh, I mean, that's not going to get it done. The flashy, great plays for sure. You know, he, he has the ability to make some difficult throws. Uh, I feel like we haven't really made seen him make a ton of mistakes, uh, which I really like. But, I mean, Tyson Bajan was the better quarterback yesterday. And Tyson Bajan going against the guys who were fighting for a roster spot, uh, not just second s- stringers. But, you know, Bajan, seven for eight, two touchdowns, and a QB rating of 151.6. You know, like, those numbers do kind of jump off the page at you. I feel good about him as a as a backup, uh, but He's to return better. to the Caleb Williams uh, talking point here, I, I think that it's it's certainly encouraging to know that Williams has the ability to make these throws. I like how much he's able to stay focused; like he always has his eyes down the field, even when he's escaping. And it's just like some of the bad habits I've kind of seen um, Bears quarterbacks in the past. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, like Fields and Trubisky both were pretty mobile. And I feel like Trubisky's mobility wasn't always used well enough. And I feel like in a lot of ways, Matt Nagy kind of like ruined Mitchell Trubisky. But I'm I'm liking what I'm seeing from Shane Waldron. And uh, and I'm liking 
like what I'm seeing from Caleb Williams. Like, I am definitely very impressed by, like, yeah, I want to see it more consistent. We aren't really going to know, I feel like, till the regular season. But what I'm seeing from just, like, pure ability, like, he certainly has it. I think he has absolutely just elite talent. But, yeah, we're going to need to see a little bit more efficiency. And I think that it's going to be easier you know, how much of a rhythm can you even get in in a preseason game, you know, as opposed to real action where uh, you get to play four quarters of football? You know, I do agree with you on that. It's hard to get into a rhythm. He got into a rhythm in the second quarter, and I give him mm -hmm. that. I give him props for that. We see the talent. The question is, you can, can you put it all together? Here's a difference that I'm noticing in Caleb Williams. He has the ability to look at his second and third options and read the field and decide what he's going to do with the football. Mm -hmm. Trubisky and Fields locked in on their first target. And if their first target wasn't open, good luck. Green Bay always said, we want Mitch Trubisky to play quarterback. When you have somebody saying our goal is to make you play quarterback, that's when you know your quarterback stinks. Mm -hmm. When Justin Fields, it was put two guys on the corner and make sure, basically put two guys and box him in so he can't get out and run and make plays. Yeah. It wasn't so much the throwing, it was the running they were worried about. And, and now if you've got like, a guy who they're worried about when he's got time in the pocket or he gets out of the pass rush and he's making plays and he's able to wing it downfield, you know, just like Caleb ball. Williams is, it's going to be a problem. Now. Yeah, because we, we saw, like, I mean, Fields had a hell of – I don't know if you saw the, the highlight from yesterday for this. Oh, he had, so, he had a good game yesterday. He just – they didn't score a touchdown. Yeah. Like, he, I think Fields is going to be good, but, like, Fields would sometimes kind of airmail some of those deep throws. He had some of it were on the money, too. Like, Fields is a good quarterback. I honestly do think so. And I think he's only going to get better. I think he's going to eventually steal that starting job this year or maybe in a few weeks. In, I have in, him as the starter. I think he's going to start week one. I, I don't think Russell Wilson has done anything to earn the starting job. I think I Justin like Field, Fields is the better quarterback at this point. But I think so. It's like Caleb's probably better than Fields right now. And I'm sure that was a big part of the thought process for the decision makers for the Bears. But I mean, they're both very escapable. I feel like the deep ball accuracy just from seeing. It's still a small sample size, but he's putting it on the money, on the deep throws, and he's able to do it on the run among guys where it's a very short list. You know, right now, like, I'm obviously thinking of uh, Patrick Mahomes can do that, but it's like kind of some Donovan McNabb, prime Donovan McNabb. <laughs> where he's like That's a good comparison. So I know. Quick, yeah. And then he, Donovan used to have an absolute cannon. Like a lot of people kind of remember washed Donovan McNabb end of his career. But um, yeah, that combination of mobility and arm strength and accuracy, it's just, uh, it's, it's fun to watch. Yeah, it, it's fun to see the potential for this guy. I mean, this is why you drafted him number one overall. And if he performs and does what he says, you know, Ryan Poles pulled off one of maybe the three most lopsided trades in the history of football. You could argue it's the most lopsided trade since the Herschel Walker trade. You could yeah. make that argument. And so, because in return for getting the number one pick, the Panthers gave up potentially three all pro players because you have Caleb Williams has the potential to be an all pro quarterback or at least a pro bowl quarterback. DJ Moore, pro bowl wide receiver, yeah. maybe the best receiver the bears have had you could argue the Bears have best wide receiver the Bears have had since, you know, I would argue Alshon Jeffrey. At least, yeah. yeah. At least since Alshon. Yeah. And so, you know, I mean, you could say Allen Robinson, you could, but I think I think DJ Moore is better I'll than Allen. DJ Robinson. over Allen. Yeah. I think Allen Robinson was a very good possession guy, but he wasn't something like that could break away like DJ can. So, you know, I, I think what we are seeing is we are seeing what Caleb can do. I still have concerns about him sitting in the pocket or being under center and being able to sit there and just make the little throws that you have to make. But I honestly think at the same time, if you just let him kind of roam around like his college days for the rookie year, he's going to make mistakes and that's okay. But overall, I think that that's just, that's what he does. That's what Pat Mahomes does. 
Mahomes is good at just rolling out and making something out of nothing. Yeah. Caleb Williams is good at making something out of nothing. He's good at improvising. So let him improvise. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Well, let me but ask you You know this, what you're then. getting. What does it, for you, for you in your opinion, what does a successful year for Caleb Williams look like? I would say if he can throw for at least 3,200 yards and 22 touchdowns, I would call that a successful year. And like, let's say like, let's, I'll give him a benefit of the doubt. I'll say 11 interceptions. Okay. But like, yeah. Because in this league picks. today, 11 is a pretty high number. Because remember back in the day, like we're talking Peyton Manning's rookie year. He led the league in interceptions and he had 28 Last year, Josh Allen led the league with only 18. You know, throwing anywhere near Dang, 15 and up. That's a crazy stat. Yeah. Would you believe that Peyton Manning led the league in picks his rookie year? I do remember that, but I just didn't realize Josh Allen, like 18 used to not be that much. It is a lot of interceptions. It's a lot now. At least you're not George Blander who threw 42 one year. Yeah. I, I, mean, <laughs> I, I would definitely love for him to keep that interception number on 10. I'm going to say, call me crazy, but I want the Bears' first ever 4,000-yard passing season. I want to keep expectations a little bit lower than that. Yeah. Do I think he can throw for 4,000? Yes. I, I think that for, for me this year, I kind of like what you're saying, that 3,222. I'm going to say 3,500, uh, at least 20 touchdowns and um, 12 or fewer picks. But I think most importantly, Bears make the playoffs. Maybe I think that would be real. That's going to be extremely important. Yeah. Because last year you had two. I consider Jordan Love a rookie. You had two quarterbacks who were rookies their first year who threw for four thousand yards. Caleb Williams can be that guy because I don't think there's a quarterback in this rookie class that's going to outclass Caleb in terms of his ability. Not to mention he has the most talent around him out of any player on there because. Washington's going to be terrible. The Patriots are the worst team in football, I would argue. They're probably only going to win three games, maybe four. And J.J. McCarthy's out for the year. Michael Penix is probably not going to start. And Bo Nix is not probably not going to start either this year. So, you know, you've got the best chance to win Rookie of the Year at the quarterback position if you're Caleb Williams. Go he out there and show what you he can do. He's the first overall pick, and he's got the best situation, so... I almost yeah. think it is a failure if he doesn't win Rookie of the Year offensive. Rookie I would agree with you on that. Season. If it's somebody else who wins Offensive Rookie of the Year, like it's a running back who runs for fifteen hundred yards, okay, but that rarely happens these it days. Could anyway. be Marvin Harrison Jr. It very well could be just because you know he could have fifteen hundred yards. You don't know what Marvin Harrison's going to do. Yeah, but um, what about some other guys? Anyone else uh, stand out to you? Uh, yesterday, I know. I thought Hardy had a great game, number ninety-two. We talked yep. about that a little before this. He had a wonderful game. I really think the Bears' defense was so stout yesterday, yeah. forcing two interceptions, had a fumble recovery last game. Three turnovers is what I like to see. You know, the defense is get, the pass rush was very good yesterday. It was only two sacks, but they were getting to the quarterback and rushing the quarterback. You know, I'm a little disappointed that. Um, Austin Booker didn't have a sack. I love that guy a lot. So he was kind of quiet yesterday, but that's okay. Overall, the Bears had a very, very good defensive game. A yeah. very good defensive game. And I think that if the biggest question I have, because the back seven, I think, is one of the best in football. The front four, what is it going to do? You don't have a second pass rusher. If it's Austin Booker, okay, great. If it turns into Austin Booker by the second half of the season and all of a sudden he's gained like 10 pounds of muscle, you know, while the season's going along, which doesn't happen, but, you know, all of a sudden he magically shows that he can play against the first stringers and he's starting by week seven and they're rotating him in and out and he's getting sacks. Like, like I said, if he can be the Bears this year's Mark Anderson for the Bears, shout out to everybody who knows that reference, um, then they have something there. But if you're not going to have that Mark Anderson, that guy who can get 12 sacks his rookie year, you got to make a trade. And I think that brings us to what we want to talk about next was 
The Bears not getting a guy like Matthew Judon. They didn't get who they wanted. I want to, I want to give Tyler Gordon some shine. Tyler Gordon looks amazing. He does look amazing. Kyler yeah. Gordon does look amazing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I just want to. Um, yeah, I. Uh, Bears defense looks really good. It does look good. Yeah, that's the thing, and that's not a surprise against the first stringers. I, I, I got Judon a little further down the totem pole here on my, uh, on my, my rundown. So, so just bear with me. Uh, here, here's my proposed transition. We're talking about best fantasy players for the Bears. That Bears defense is must have. I think it's going to be one of the ten best in fantasy. I, I would agree with you on that. I think year. you could you could be right because that secondary is going to get picks no matter what. Yeah. And Jim Johnson, if you I've been watching Hard Knocks, Keenan Allen can't get. Keenan Allen can't catch a pass on him. No. Roman Dunes, they can't catch a pass on him. So pissed he got left off top 100. I don't know how. First of all, that's a stupid list anyway. If you don't have Jalen Johnson in your top 100, I don't know what you're doing. I, I don't know what your logical thinking process is, but it's not there and you need to rethink it. Because Jalen Johnson is maybe, it. you could argue, is one of the three best corners in the national football league yeah. and you can leave them off the top 100 the guy they had a guy i think from seattle who was in the top 100 and he was getting burned last year the whole year so and, and you want to put him in the top 100 and the main reason that he was in is because seattle was in the playoffs and the bears weren't and a lot of times i think these guys what they tend to do for these top 100s is favor people who were in the playoffs versus who weren't but the fact that aaron Rodgers is on the top 100 list and jalen johnson wasn't i agree is ludicrous I believe the Bears tied with 49ers last year for the most takeaways in the NFL. I'm going to fact check that. But, um, and I, I hope no one in my uh, fantasy football league is listening to this because I'm about to kind of share some of my actual. Bears fantasy. were fifth last year in takeaways. Where, where were the Niners? The 49ers, if I have this right. Hold on, let me get this because this is slow. There's. Too many dang. Was it interceptions? I know they were tied with the Niners for. Six. They were tied with the Niners for takeaways. They had twenty eight, and the 49ers had twenty eight. Okay, so so they did have tied with, and that's for the most in the NFL. Yes. Okay. For the fifth most in the NFL. Who had more than twenty eight? Let me see. That's a good question. If I look right here, it says. To get to it, not scoring off this. It was the Giants and the Ravens. No way. The Giants had the most takeaways last year at 31, and the Ravens had 31. The Bears, Browns, and 49ers each had 28. Okay, here's what I was thinking of. Interceptions tied with the 49ers for most interceptions. The most, yes. The Bears did have the most picks in the NFL. 22. Yeah. Inter that's... I, I think they could have 25 this year. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know... I feel like the defense just got better. I don't think that's a hot take either. Um, my my thoughts on like fantasy, as far as defense goes, is you don't want to grab a defense like early, obviously, but right, you want to make sure you have one of the defenses that can any given week win you a week. Think about those Lovey Smith defenses where it's like some weeks they were just kind of. Whole, like they were always good or usually at least good right but then there's some games where they would have a pick six and a punt return and four sacks and uh and, and peanuts punching balls out just game runners you know where all of a sudden you win your fantasy week because your defense went crazy 
and the other defense did a normal two to six points, and the Bears had 32, you know. The thing with Lovey Smith teams was it was built on defense and special teams, and the whole idea was get the ball to Hester, let him get you to the 40-yard line, and let him do his thing. And it was – if the Bears defense was going to hold you to 17 points, all you had to do was get to 20, and the Bears would win the game. That was – how Lovey built his teams, and that's how it was. Now, I actually, and this is my personal opinion, Jake Cutler got the short end of the stick. He had so many offensive coordinators. He yeah. had no wide receivers. He the, His best wide receiver that he had, he didn't get till the very end of his career with the Chicago Bears. And by then, I mean, you know, who knows what would have happened. But by then, Lovey was gone. You had the second best offense in the league, but you also had the second worst defense in the league. So, it was, you know, what are you going to do? But to get back to where we were, um, I just think, you know, with this Bears team, it's going to come down to the defensive line. If the defensive line can get the pressure that you need, that secondary is going to take care of itself because they're going to produce a lot of turnovers and they're going to cause a lot of problems. And where I need to see everything being executed properly I need to see what you can do against Green Bay. Yeah. Green Bay is the standard for you. Every time we play Green Bay, they kill us with their game plan. If you can go in there and disrupt their game plan and say, this is not happening again. We got the pass rush. We got the secondary. We got the quarterback. We got the linebackers. We got everything we need to beat you. Go in and show, especially for those division games that are going to be the toughest that you can do, that you're going to play because those are always tough. And you got six of them in your last eight weeks, go in there and show that you have a team that is capable of producing the way you need to produce. Cause it's going to be very, very, very tricky. If that pass rush is not there, cause if that pass rush is not there and you have five seconds to throw, there's not much. The secondary is going to be able to do and well, being actually when you somebody going 20 Green yards downfield. Insane weapons on offense. Like, yeah, they do, they, but they, if your defense has struggles pa rushing the passer, because remember, the Bears were 31st in sacks last year. Even with Montez Sweat producing the way he was, they were still 31st. Year, but yeah, and I think this is a good time, time to transition to the – yeah, like they made a play for Judon. The Falcons wound up making a stronger offer, but – the, the writing on the walls, the Bears are looking to increase that pass rush, and I think that's kind of the missing link there. So I think what if I were the Bears, um, and this is my personal opinion. Um, so I personally think, you know, they're doing what they need to do. Um, but if I'm the Bears right now, he's an he's an elder statesman in the NFL, but he could probably play, you know, and do what he has to do for one season. He. He had nine and a half sacks in 2022. You could take a flyer on someone like Justin Houston if you have to. He's older. He's 35. But, you know, if you really want to sign somebody, try and sign someone like Justin Houston. Make a trade for um, that player with the Jets. The thing um, that's Reddick. holding up right now. Hassan Reddick? Has, yes, Hassan Reddick. Make a play for Hassan Reddick. But I think that that wouldn't work because he wants $30 million a year. And he's never played with his hand in the dirt. So I don't think that that's going to work. What I think you need to do, and this is where I think the Bears made a mistake, you didn't go after Daniel Hunter last season. You didn't go after the pass rusher that you needed. You have $21 million in salary cap space right now. You mean to tell me that you couldn't have backloaded that contract and kind of front load, you know, backloaded the contract a little bit for the two, for a, let's say a three, four year deal and just made sure that you had your dot your I's and you cross your T's? Because you're probably not going to have Keenan Allen back next year. That would have given you the money to at least, you know, keep more of Daniel Hunter. You need to have that pass rush because this defense needs it in order to work. You have to have every part of the defense flowing. It's a machine. If all the cogs are not working, the machine's not going to work. I, I like what you're saying about Houston, especially because you could kind of get him on a bridge situation where you get him on one year. You let Booker bulk up. You, you let him get some reps. You keep developing him. Because here's the issue if you do get Hassan Reddick, who's, of course, a guy. He can get to the Pro Bowl. He's a monster. We're familiar with his work. But 
the reason he's even leaving New York is because it, it's a it's a money thing. The Bears are going to have to pay big time to keep Reddick around. They're already paying sweat big time. I think it would almost be better to, like, if you can find a way to solve that without hamstringing yourself financially, then I think that would be worthwhile. Well, that's where drafting comes in, buddy. That's where the drafting comes in. That's where Booker comes in. And I think, like we said, if Austin Booker can prove, you know, that he can be that guy, then, you know, the Bears are going to be okay. It's just the problem is you've got rotational guys at the second defensive end spot. And you can't have that if you want to be a very good team. Now, what I do think the Bears are going to do is, this is my personal opinion, I think they're going to make a trade by the trade deadline because they're going to have to. I think that Poles is going to see, he's going to give it maybe two or three weeks and he's going to say, I can't do this anymore. I can't have I can't have us getting one sack a game. I can't have that. Or two sacks. I can't have that. I need to see three. I need to see four. I need to see six to seven quarterback hits. I need to see eight or nine rushes where the quarterback is struggling to get into his motion. I need to see that. Because this isn't, you know, this isn't the old days where you could have a Steve McMichael. You could have a Dan Hampton. You could have a Richard Dent. You could have three crazy good guys and keep all those guys because there was no salary cap. It's not like that anymore. So, you know, you've got to be able to find some pieces. And if Austin Booker can be that guy, great. But you got to remember, he's a fifth round draft choice. Yeah, you can select to ask for a fifth round rookie. It's not like he was their, you know, First or second round pick, where no, he's got a, he needs time. Game one, and he barely played. He's only and he's barely played any college football, let alone you know NFL. So you know we'll see what he can do. But that is my main concern: is if you do not have that pass rush, how is the rest of the defense going to hold up? Yeah, because the, yeah. the more pressure you put on them, the harder it gets for them to execute eventually. Because then they'll get tired. Very good at stopping the run, like. And if they can stop the run, they'll be okay. And, and, and it, it seems like with Eberflus, they've always been a good run-stopping team. And Believe it or not, if you look at last year, number one rush defense in the NFL. And I believe the year before, too, if you can check that out somehow. The year before, the Bears, I think, were the worst rush defense in the NFL. They were, the Bears went from 31st to number one in the NFL in rush defense. Oh, wow. Okay. 31st. They gave up the most rushing touchdowns in the league. They gave up 31 rushing touchdowns in 2022. 2023, they gave up eight. So if you can have that rush defense and that secondary, you'll be fine. You just got to have that pass rush. Yeah. Well, I, I, I like what you're saying with Houston, like I, like I said. Uh, Reddick would be interesting. He's right now pulling up his contract. He wants twenty eight to thirty million. You just can't do that. Yeah, you can't do that for a guy. I don't. Mean, he's thirty two, and it's like I'm not paying a guy thirty two. I'm not paying a guy twenty eight thirty million dollars. He's thirty two. No, he's no, maybe he's got 30, two years. He's thirty as well. He's only thirty years old. Oh, but even so, like you're on the back end. I don't want to pay a guy that yeah, much. I'm, I'm not ready to. I'd rather get a bridge guy to kind of hold down the fort and develop Booker at that point. Uh, I mean, I would have loved for the Bears to get Chase Young. I was rooting for that in the offseason, but then Chase Young wound up having some injury stuff we learned about, you know. And so, but I I am interested because, like, if they were looking at Judon, that says that they're not necessarily done. Um, And then I think, you know, the Jets have said that they're not going to trade Reddick, but. We'll see, man. We will see what happens. Yeah, and, and when you do some digging, there is a lot of noise on the internet around the Bears and Hassan Reddick. So I wouldn't be surprised if this time next week that I mean, he, he, he could be a Bear. And if, and if he does, great. At this point, like, I feel comfortable enough with what Ryan Poles has done where I'm not going to, like, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. You know, I do, too. It's not like years past where I've seen certain Bears front offices just do things, and I'm like, what the hell are you doing? You know, That's true. 
um, at this point, like, they've been pretty savvy. They've made a lot of good moves. And if they get Redick, I'm sure it's going to work out. The goal right now is if they can even finish second in the NFC North this year, that'd be, be horrible. Because the, the Lions and the Packers look damn good. And like that Packers. They all, I mean, the Packers always do. It's the friggin' Packers. It's like the St. Louis Cardinals. They always look good. Yeah, yeah. If, if Christian Watson's healthy, you know, and then grabbing Josh Jacobs, you got two really good tight ends. And uh, Moss be tough. Brave and um, the South Dakota State guy, uh, Tucker Kraft. You got Dobbs. I mean, they're they're loaded. They are loaded. That's very true. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, I think that got through just about everything we got here. Uh, any any closing remarks before we uh, wrap this one up? Just want to keep seeing the development of Caleb Williams and the development of this team. And I'm glad it, Caleb he had some growing pains in week two. Let's see what he can do for the next game. I think it'll be better next game. All right. Keep getting better every week. All right, thanks, folks, for listening. Running with the Bears, Adam and Josh, signing off.